Hello everybody and welcome to the first quarter-final of the World Cup. It's, uh, it's a quick snap we start with. Um, Andre versus Ornan. Andre won the coin toss and chose to kick, which I think is a bit, a bit um, unusual. Um, you know, I, I would say I don't agree with it, but there's certainly there's certainly reasons to kick. But I wouldn't have done. I would have received. Um, Andre is has a 68% win rate in Champs Ladder. He qualified from Pietro Di Minatoro. And he is the Spanish Blood Bowl 2010 World Cup champion. Ornan has a 65% win rate, win rate in Champs Ladder, qualified from Rebel, and he is American. Um, so yeah, Ornan in the yellow and black humans. So you can actually tell them apart from the all white humans, which is maybe maybe Andre's a Real Madrid fan. Who knows? Um, so you can actually tell these teams apart, which is nice. But some of the human mirrors have been a nightmare in that regard. Um, maybe Ornan's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Who knows? <laughs> right. So, yeah. Skills-wise, um, Andrew's gone for guard on his block catcher, which I think is a great choice. Gives him five guard total. Very good. Mighty bow tackler, block on the ogre. The only thing is he is missing guard on the ogre, which is a little bit... You know, maybe he's, maybe he's, if he didn't have block on the catcher and had guard on the over instead, that would be better. Uh, or maybe I would prefer it more, <laughs> shall we say. Nice blitz, getting another block if he doesn't knock him over. And, um, yeah, Ornan has his piling on mighty blow guy, which, of course, has the potential to just win the game on dice, which is pretty good. Pretty good weapon to have, isn't it? Roll some dice and win is always good. Um, he used his normal no he's a double this round he used his double for guard on the catcher but he's not wasted his skills really he, he almost wasted it a little bit by taking tackle on a player um, because he was playing Amazons and uh, well he actually took tackle on the guard because he was playing Amazons and you know so you probably would have rather had a guard instead of that second tackle but you know it's it's not terrible is it he's got a bit more Tackle against, you know, both sides have got catchers. So it's it's not terrible to have that extra tackle, but um, certainly if he wins this game and the run wins his game, then the tackle will be completely dead skills. Um, but, you know, he won't care because he'll be in the semi-final, I guess. So I, I think, you know, I think it was... And to be honest, like, against the Amazons that he took the tackle for, an extra guard would have been all right as well. So it's not like, it's not set in stone that Tackle was better against the Amazons, but, you know, he won. That's what counts. And, you know, he's in this match and anything can happen. Like a Kaz there, with his piling on guy. So he doesn't even need to pile on there. It would have been a little bit of a dangerous pile on as well. Because he could have maybe been chained out into a big foul. But with only 12 men from uh, Andre, he probably wouldn't do, be able to do too much about it. Um, Andre has gone for the 12 men and that, that was an interesting one he could have appoed that really it was minus movement but so it only been 50 50 to appo it but it is a guard player so you know it's a question of quantity versus quality isn't it he does only have 12 players plus an appo three re-rolls Ornan only has two re-rolls um, and has 13 players so with Ornan I would have thought a lot more about appoing that just for purely for the quality player um, but Andrew's obviously saving it for a badly hurt um, to knock Gomen down. Gets a, gets a Kaz back, 10 versus 10, and that was pretty important to not get surfed. <laughs> uh, so that was, that was nice setting that up. Big wall. A big wall of guard makes it hard for the Pom to do anything apart from blitz this Lino. Which would be stupid because he's got the blitz doing there anyway. So he goes for the blitz, which which was actually a nice blitz. This is a bit of an unlucky uh, bonehead here because he he'd done this blitz, frees up this guy, and then that guy can dodge out on a three plus. But as it is, he's trapped by the bonehead, and this guy's got to do a three plus or get punched. So a bit unlucky with that bonehead. 
obviously losing the hit as well which could have been could have been brutal so yeah just thinking about this screen oh now he's making a cage i mean humans are quite fast so yes this guy gets knocked down as well you know so that that, that bonehead led to this guy getting knocked down and now um, you know, there's a few ways you can do it, isn't there? Or, um, Andrew, he's got, you know, he could, he could just put a, put a guard in here and block and, you know, kind of play it safe. But obviously it's really tempting to either go for a 75% knockdown on him with Mighty Blow or a value hit on the Pom with Mighty Blow and then move the Ogre to base the ball and just try to base everyone here. I think it's very tempting to go very high risk here. I, I would probably be getting everybody in base-to-base -base contact on this turn. Um, so he does go for kind of the easier hit, easier knockdown chance. Does not get the knockdown, which pretty unlucky to not get the knockdown. And then very unlucky to get the bonehead. Because, you know, if he'd got the knockdown there, he, he could have then based everybody in, on the cage here. And now... He even went for the higher chance of the knockdown and didn't get it. And now he can't base everybody up. And most importantly, the guy basing the ball is just a free assist for his pom blitz. Whereas if it had been the ogre on the ball, it would have been a lot harder. So that... It wasn't... You know, these two guys have gone nowhere, which is a bit crap, I guess. But um, that really was basically like a bad turn because the dice the dice were really bad there if, if he'd had much, if it had better dice he, that could have been a really uh that could have been a really good blitz there and he gets the pile on i'm i'm, I'm not sure i piled on there obviously Ornan must have thought this turn through before or should have thought should have thought this uh should have thought this turn through before go before piling on there um, you know, but he's probably got enough. He's probably got enough with that guy there. And that GFI, it's, you know. Also, he could have possibly um, hit the Blitzer with the Catcher there. Seeing as they're both down or a double skull, you know, it doesn't make much difference. And then he could have got a higher chance knockdown over there. Um, but just possibly. And then he makes this 3 plus dodge, which means, you know, the pile on. You know why not pile on? He gets the removal. It's, uh, but it, you know, obviously, it makes this sort of situation a little bit worse. And now the bad dice that Andre had the turn before means that he's basically stuck doing nothing with his whole team. <laughs> you know, so he could have got a bunch of pressure on. He didn't manage to wedge anybody where Ornan could escape to, and now it's looking very bad for him. Another bonehead absolutely brutal um, and that was a blitz as well I guess he was going to blitz this guy and move him up there and because he couldn't make that blitz he has to make this dodge which he then gets stunned on so he's had he's had a torrid time in the match so far as Andrew absolutely absolutely very unlucky so far and you know that's not to say that maybe he's Ornan wouldn't be in a good spot I mean Ornan's it was Ornan's bonehead that got him into the mess in the first place. I think he really wanted the knockdown there. Obviously, he can't re-roll it with only two. Uh, maybe, to be fair, maybe Andre should have used a re-roll on turn three um, when, he, when he tried to put that pressure on. So another bonehead here from the Ogre. And, you know, maybe you could have not activated him and just kept him back. But he's not really doing a whole lot there, so I think it was worth activating him. One way or the other. Maybe just tagging the uh, Mighty Blow Tackler would have been a good use of him. Cheeky, cheeky dodge, yeah, and GFI to make a screen. And this is alright, but... You know... I, I, I'm not a fan of this move, and I'll, I'll tell you why. 
I think he should have maybe gone for the furthest forward person. Um, he ends up basing the furthest person, furthest forward person anyway, and assisting there. I think maybe he's knocking down the guy furthest forward. He's still got a chance to stop this score. He does get the ogre in though. That's why he went for the hit to get the ogre in. And then uh, one in eighty ones this block, and you know that block, you, he gets horribly unlucky. One in eighty ones and cases himself. <laughs> uh, just badly hurt, so he apples it for numbers. But you know, you got to think to yourself, where was this guy going to go? And maybe he should have moved him first. Um, but you know, maybe his plan was to do the two dice block, and then if it, uh, if he, you know, made GFIs with this guy, if if he had the reroll still available. Um, so yeah, he needs the push here, and he gets it. Doesn't pile on. Some restraint. And yeah, he's. Uh, maybe he didn't even need the push there. Maybe he could have blocked with this guy or something. I think he probably did need the push though. So this is pretty tricky still, isn't it? I think that was maybe his, maybe his mistake. This, this, I think this was maybe a mistake. Well, I don't think it was maybe a mistake. I think that was a mistake. Um, well, maybe not. Because what he could do here is, he's gone for the Ogre Blitz. But what he could have done is, um, he could have got Guard in here. And he could have one dice this guy. And if it's a pal, he can just fully get in the back, can't he? Um, he could have put Guard... You know, I don't know, he could have done something, he could have dodged one dice, up one dice here to get rid of that gun, got a one dice on the ball. I think he had to do something desperate, you know, he's down two players, um, he's got eight versus ten, so he's disadvantaged by two players. I think going for the going for the back door one dice block would have been a good idea, but you know, that's not to say what he did was wrong, because he got a huge Kaz there. Um, Instant Apo there from Ornan. And you know, he does, he does quite well here. He, he gets the Ogre in. Um, you know, and he's, he's got the ball based. Maybe should have done this one first, eh? No? Safe moves first. And I think putting this guy in there is the best. But. He does not do that. I think, and I'll tell you, because, you know, the obvious way to free his thrower here is with the ogre, isn't it? Um, and, yeah, I think, as scary as it would have been, I think catcher in here would have been the play. But as it was, he, he did the double GFI to get a two-dice block and then failed it and used a reroll. And, sure enough, the first action that uh, Ornan makes is the two-dice block. Gets another cast from the bottom guy. I mean, I understand wanting to hit over here. That, that's that's absolutely fair. But now he's going to get the uh, ogre on ogre violence. The ball's still going to be quite hard to protect after this, though. Um, it's not easy. Of course, it's easier when your ogre breaks his arm, uh, his ogre's armor. <laughs> And uh, and now all of a sudden, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. He he does need to make this block. And he gets a power as well, so that was that was a big turn, and and Arnon got some big dice on that turn. Now I think the only play is the catcher uphill, one in four chance to knock over the thrower. I wouldn't use a reroll on it, I'd save my reroll for the one turn. But um, I think, you know, one in four to, to get the ball out, something could happen, couldn't it? Could swarm with tackle zones or whatever. But he just goes for the mighty blow tackle hit, which, you know, it could. It could have it could have got some results, but really, they're armor eight. It's not that likely to hurt them. And uh, this is a weird turn from on, and um, basically. 
his idea his idea is to not pile on um, if he blitzes this guy and then chain, chain surfs this guy out. So you need to pow and then chain surf this catcher out. Whereas I think what he absolutely should have done was just blitz this catcher with his palm. If he powers him, all good. If he doesn't pow him, surf him. And this is a bit weird. Because <laughs> he has to not pow here to get the surf. And he piles. He had to not pile to get two assists because he's got the guard there. So the only way he could get the surf was by not piling there. But he gets a KO, which is all right. But he doesn't get the surf. Um, moves them in, and then and then realizes that it'd be a one dice block, and then says, "Okay, I'll score." <laughs> So one nil at the half. And Andrew's got, you know, he's got a re-roll. He's movement eight. It's not, he's got agility three with dodge. It's not ridiculous to get this one turn. Uh, only needs three pushes. But he is down, he is down men, he's only got nine guys, so it's pretty pretty difficult to get with nine players, to be fair. But not a uh, not a stern defense from Ornan, he's going for the he's going for the back line. Should have had tacklers here, shouldn't he? So that would be like... Would, or would it not matter? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter because he just go through there. So it doesn't matter where his, where his tacklers are. I hate using the whole method. This is... Uh, I'll never, ever, ever get behind it. Maybe it was necessary with only nine players. Maybe it was. And then this is... Uh, a potentially crucial stun there, actually, because with only nine players, it's pretty hard to get the required pushes. But he gets the he gets the first one. Maybe he should go for the pass here as well, just because humans are uh, crap agility. So he probably shouldn't have done the pass first when he was in one tackle zone. Maybe because it's a, it's a long pass, isn't it? And then he gets the three dice. Now this, this, this was wrong here. Um, <laughs> getting the three dice power is okay, but he should have moved the catcher to here. And then what he could have done was this catcher could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the ogre could have dodged and gone one, two, three, four, five, GFI. Now of course, if he hadn't been, uh, if he hadn't been stunned by the rock. This guy could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, and the catcher, and he could have done that and got uh, got the two dice that way. But he does actually push him in the wrong square there, and now there is no way. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, he could have still dodge and double GFI'd with the ogre. Um, so it's still possible at this point, but he just went for a hit. Um, he probably should have re-rolled the bonehead there, maybe, eh? To try and get, try and get a Kaz with mighty blow. He does the pass and it wouldn't have worked out anyway. So yeah, that's the thing. It would have been it would have been a longer pass passing him to there. So ah, oh, but then yeah, he could have done the pass and the handoff. That might have been a, an idea as well. Pass it to him and then move him the handoff. Then he was going to fill the gap. So yeah, that might have been the right play actually, passing it to him. But he definitely should have dodged the ogre out if he wanted to try and score. And I think you've got to try, you know. Like, sure, he might, he might have failed the dodge, you know, 50% dodge, and he might have been cast. But I think you've got to go for it, you know. I think you've really got to go for the one turn there. Uh, you know, and, and obviously the stun made it a lot harder than it would have been without it. But he still kind of gave up on it when, when he could have still scored the one turner. Um, but, you know, to be fair, and this is being pretty critical, you know, and he's got three minutes and, you know, he's under pressure and everything. 
Um, and also, he's probably a little bit pissed off <laughs> that he's taken three cars and two of them were guard players, you know. Um, Ornan's only taken one cars. Um, oh, Ornan's taken two cars, yeah, and I pulled one. So, he's getting out bashed, but he's down quality, that's the thing, isn't he? He's down two guarders, whereas Ornan's guy is just a lineman. So, you know, and now he's actually down on the pitch as well. It's 10 versus 11. And if it goes through overtime, Onan's got another another reserve as well. And there's a pitch invasion, so this might even it up. Oh no, no Onan's got two for him and uh, <laughs> Now Andre's hopes are hanging by a thread as half his team's knocked on the ground nearly. That is, uh, that is very rough. Now, I, I don't like this, what he does here, which is what Arzawain did in every game. Now, they're both Spanish, so maybe Arzawain explained to him why he did it afterwards. Or maybe uh, Andrew just thought that, you know, it was, it was a horrible position and he wanted the, a more mobile carrier. But um, I really don't like the picking up the throw and then handing off to a catcher. And, but, you know, he's done it. You know, because I think if you just stand him there, you can always hand off and move anyway next turn. But he did do... He did, he did do that play. And, you know, to be fair, he's, you know, the fact that the ball carry can move 10 squares now is certainly, is certainly good when he's down this many players. Obviously, he's not, he's only down two. And one player, actually, now 10 players, 10 versus 11. So he's only down one player on the pitch, but he's down quality and all these stuns make it very scary for him. He's really reduced to kind of like one dicing a fair amount of the time here. I wouldn't have even hated just pass blitzing with him and getting the ball to him just to try and get a touchdown at all. <laughs> but he makes a rando Kaz there. That was pretty helpful. Well, not rando, it's tackle mighty blow. Um, and yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty nice cast to make. So now it's ten versus ten on the pitch. But by carrying it with a catcher, he's um he's now giving up a two dice if he wants. So he could even run around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double you know, So you'd have to make a dodge or two to run around that way. Dodge for two dice. Maybe he just hits the catcher or the tackler might be alright. Blitz the tackler and base the ball. And knock him down. There's, he's got options. I like having the, the kind of safety there. He does go for the dodge two dice. Gets double pow. Goes for a, goes for a lucky scatter. Doesn't really get it. You know, this with this guy free whacked. If it goes over here, if it goes over here, it's probably quite bad for him actually. But if it goes there, he could have just scored and won, couldn't he? If it gone to the crowd and the crowd had thrown it back as well as what I failed to really explain properly there. <laughs> and this is this is horrible for Andre now, isn't it? You know, he's got able to get him out was pretty good, but everything is like three plus dodges and one dice blocks and stuff. One dice blitz gets the pow. Into a death. <laughs> okay. Assist this block. Both down. 
gets another Kaz, and he needed the Kaz, otherwise it was just a straight up two dice on the ball, wasn't it, without any rolls. So that was an incredibly lucky Kaz. Um, and he couldn't really take the push either, so he had to take the board down and hold for an AV break and got it. Maybe he didn't have to go for that block, um, because it would have just been a one dice without, without assists and stuff. But I can see why I went for it. And yeah, now this has swung a little bit now, hasn't it? Now it's it's 10 versus 8 advantage for Andre. Um, or it was, now it's 9 versus 8. <laughs> for, for some reason, humans are just the bashiest team. Well, I'll tell you why it is, it's because the rules in this... The rules in this competition made them the highest guard team. But also in just random rolling. <laughs> you know, Kaz, the Kaz are pretty random. Sure, Ornan's got an advantage overall in having a POM guy. Um, but realistically, it's pretty much all dice in the individual game. So he makes the dodge, dodge tackle blitz. And it's not a, it's not a terrible scatter. It's not a great scatter, but it's not terrible. I like the dodge round there. And of course, there's a surf here. No, there's not a surf. It's not really a surf. <laughs> um, there's a surf if he had players. He could have blitzed, pushed him to there, and then put two players and surfed him. But he's got to, he's got to fight for the ball, hasn't he? He's got to blitz there, hope for a knockdown, then go for the ball pickup. Double skulls, not what he needed. So, so while while he's got a couple of removals there, this drive, Andrew, well, three removals this drive, he is down to one, no one reroll. And here's the thing, he doesn't GFI there. Now, I think he had to G, I would have GFI'd, because I would have thought I had to GFI. Um, like, just back one, I guess. But it actually works out quite well for me. He didn't GFI here, but, but let's have a look at this. What, what would you do if you're on that? Um... He's got a few options. He can block with the ogre here and then come in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six for 2D. Um, or he could block here, 2D, bring the catcher around there, block there, and then come in for 2D on the ball. So he's got he's got like a couple of ways he can get two dice on the ball. He could also block there and then maybe run around here, um, you know, to have block with him and stuff so that he could have done a, he could have done a lot of things um, so it probably was pretty hard to keep the ball safe actually and so maybe not making the GFI was the right play because yeah if he GFI to here he could have blocked catcher could have come round and he could have blocked and got two dice that way he actually doesn't go for the two dice on the ball here or now um, I don't know if you just didn't see it because it is easy to get tunnel of vision while playing so he might have not saw, seen it or he might have not wanted to go for it he does get two dice on the ogre this way um, no, it does leave him stuck on two players and he goes for the ogre blitz and base the ball which is which is alright isn't it gets another removal so now all of a sudden um, <laughs> what, what are we looking at now um, Eight players aside. <laughs> Eight players on the pitch for each team here. So you go straight for the surf. Now he could have just gone for the one dice surf here, but he doesn't. He doesn't go for the one dice surf. Um, he goes for the two dice surf. Now if he'd gone for the one dice there, this would have freed this guy up to come in and, and put guard around everywhere there. But he doesn't. He doesn't do that. He does the one dice. He does the two dice, which, you know, is to be fair. But now it means this is a one dice. And now if the one dice is there, or he just goes to the four plus handoff. Um, I think the four plus handoff was right with one one reroll. I think I think the two dice bliss was right. Um, you know, maybe he's, this guy just doesn't really do anything. If he'd come back there and based, he could have done a two dice block on the ogre, which might have been better. Um... But I think for what it was, that was all he could do, really. Uh, pretty much. It was, you know, maybe he could have been ballsier and, and moved the uh, 
move the blitzer upfield in case he in case he made this handoff. But as it is, the blitzer didn't really do a whole lot. I think one dicer here. This was a this was a bit a bit greedy by Ornan going for that one dicer to free up the catcher. But then you know, it's it's desperation from both people, isn't it? You know, and then that was huge. Double skull from the ogre, unbelievable, Jeff. And now that is basically that one block has demolished um, Ornan's defense, hasn't it? Really, and that's why maybe this guy should have gone there. And and he is there's a little a little something here. Um, he goes for the pickup now. Now what he could have done. <laughs> he could have moved his catcher first. Um, and then he could have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then he could have scored without making any GFIs. But I'm not moving the catcher first. Obviously it gives him another player in the way if he if he one in nines the pickup. But it does guarantee him having to make a GFI to score. Which is not something you ever want to do, is it? Um, so... You know, it's again. It's not. It's not a mistake. Him not moving the catcher first. Absolutely not a mistake. It's all risk versus reward, and failure states and all that. It's um. It's absolutely fair. So he gets the ogre basing two two down players there. Um, yeah, it's quite good, isn't it? He screens off for the ogre there. That's that's pretty good. And he couldn't really stop the ogre basing two players. Yeah, the pom, the pom fishing for a pow here. Doesn't get it. It's a pretty big dodge for him. Well, it was a 50-50, but if it had worked, it would have been terrific, wouldn't it? So now, yes, blitz with a blitz with a ball carry, but then you lose a square of movement. Whether you blitz with him or assist with him, you, you lose a square of movement. So yeah, he goes for the assist. And this works out quite well, to be fair. I think if he was one square forward, going for the blitz would have been better because then he could have he could have got another square forward, um, which would have been pretty good. But now he's in two, needs two GFIs to score. I mean, there's there's a dodge for a one dice on the ball, or he could um, dodge the catcher around. And then make it two dice. Instead, it goes for the one dice block, which, you know, and he's not going to re roll it. I think he should have absolutely gone for the dodge. Um, he could have dodged around, then this guy could have blitzed. Uh, but uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, he does have guards, so actually blitzing with this guy was out. I only saw this blitz. Oh no, yeah, he could blitz there because there's no assist. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so he should, I think he should have dodged around. And then. And then blitzed, but you know, he, he didn't, that's fair enough. And now a couple of GFIs. Fills the first one, absolutely classic. It's so standard, isn't it? But he makes the next two. So it's 1 1. And it's overtime. And this string of cars has given Andre half a chance here. But he is out of re-rolls. Oh, it's not necessarily overtime. Okay, got ahead of myself there. Um, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine players without a uh, without a re-roll is unlikely to score. But you know he made the pushes last time nearly, Andre. So he's got to be a bit wary of it. And this is huge, this this KO really has to come back, I think. 
It's nine versus nine at the moment. Um, yeah, nine versus nine. But the key thing is, Ornan is not missing skills. He's he's lost blitz. Uh, he's lost lineman, and he's lost an unskilled catcher. Whereas Andre is down guard, guard, guard. <laughs> and now, you know, you can say that Ornan targeted them with mighty blow, but you know, Andre was targeting Ornan's guys with mighty blow as well. So it's just it's just the way the like kind of random cars have come out. But uh, particularly this this. Obviously, the, the coin toss is huge, but the uh, getting rerolls of kickoff could be huge. Perfect defense, that definitely. Didn't even go for the one turner, um, Ornan, which, you know, okay, you haven't got the best chance with only nine players, but I still think he should have gone for it. You know, he could have got a quick snap or a touchback or something to make it a lot easier. But he was just going to go for damage with the palm hits and everything. And I think he probably didn't realise he had his own guard guy there when he when he made that move. Um, just gets the push. You know, and this was a long game, so maybe his brain's frazzled a bit at this point as well. That's the power. Doesn't follow. So, you know, this was, this was probably a misclick. I, I can't believe he would have chosen to just not follow and not pile on. <laughs> and also, it meant that he, because he hadn't followed, he didn't get the additional block for, after the non-knockdown. So, I'm sure there had to be a misclick there. Nobody would have... Nobody would have not followed there on purpose. <laughs> and this guy does not come back, so he's down a lot of guard, is Andre. But even players. And Andre has won the toss. But the crucial thing, and it's pretty crazy, really, and, and, and to be fair, and <laughs> now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna act clever or I told you so, but the, the team that's on offense has to use rerolls, uh, you know, to protect the ball. The team that's on defense doesn't necessarily have to use rerolls. Um, Andre has used all three rerolls on offense, and Orna has only used one reroll on defense. And it was Andre's choice to kick in the first half. And you know, now he's on zero rerolls, even though he's won the toss. And it's it does suck being on zero re. I hate being on zero rerolls. It's horrible. Um, and maybe because he's on zero rerolls is why he goes for this, you know, uh, very, very, you know, committed to a one turn, a two turn touchdown here. Uh, right, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, he's set up pretty strongly for the, the push down the side here. And he gets a great, a great target defenseless guarder. To blitz with his tackle mighty blow. Maybe he shouldn't have moved that guard, right? Maybe he shouldn't have moved that one. I mean he's horribly unlucky there to fail that to fail a pickup. Now it's got nothing to do with him having no rerolls, of course, sure hands. But, yeah, this, this guy that he moved out to there, if he hadn't moved him, he'd still be there and there'd be screens and, and stuff. So, that, you've got to say, as harsh as it is, moving, moving this lineman was an absolute... That's what lost him the game, actually. Well, I say it lost him the game. <laughs> it looks like it's lost him the game. Um, because, yeah, if he'd had that player there... You know, there was no need of movement until he picked up and handed off. So so it's a bit like what he did in the first half, where he, he kept that catcher back and made his throw move an extra square to have that to have that safety net if he failed to pick up. This time he didn't do it. He didn't have the safety net. 
and he's lost the ball and it's looking absolutely horrific for him isn't it I mean it looks like he's lost the game doesn't it now there's no real no real way back from here I don't think I guess he's got a dodge you can dodge this guy around and then you can dodge this guy out for a 2D one, two, oh, fuck off this. Camera moving. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI. So he has to make this block first. Then it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So he, he wants to block for the push. So he can dodge. Or he could just dodge with the first one, I guess. But whatever happens, he one in nines it. And it's looking really, really bad. <laughs> Three dice block with Pom. Doesn't follow, doesn't pile on. It's the only player who could reach him. So I'm a little surprised that he doesn't follow there. Or doesn't make that three dice from the ogre. But it's so he can move this guy in. That's fair enough. And you've got to say this is a this is a misplay by Ornan here. He could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? He could have been all the way over there. As it is, he goes down here, and all of a sudden he's in range of the Lyman basing him and the catcher basing him. And you know, I guess that's just one of those things where you just do it, you know. It, they've been playing for they've been playing for two hours at this point. And, you know, his brain's probably frazzled. But that's definitely a bit of a misplay allowing Allowing that. But again, no re-roll. Double GFI here. To base the ball. Gets it. GFI from him as well, I think. Oh, no, dodge. Yep. And now he's got a 4 plus 3 plus with dodge for two dice on the ball. But he fails. <laughs> every... every Everything failed there. Uh, three, three, two, one. Yeah, that's not. It's not what you need, is it? And and that, that's the thing with humans. To be fair, you know that whatever happens, they've got to roll one in nines, and it's like it's what me, it's what put me off them. Really, it was uh, was this having to roll, you know, three pluses, whatever happens. Okay, that was a 4+, plus, but you get what I mean. <laughs> there was a chance here, um, and it's not really better, but there was a chance to have moved this lineman to here and then dodge out the thrower to two dice, and then on a pow, you don't need a dodge. But I think probably just going for the dodge is straight up better. So he blitzes to, to position better. You know, get, gets guys out in case for the failure state if he fails the dodge. And it's a 3 plus with a reroll to win. And yeah, I, I kind of did drop a little bit of a spoiler there, didn't I? Well, never mind. Uh, you know, it wasn't that much of a spoiler. It was it was looking horrible for Henry there, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, that, it turns out that, that one movement of a guy is probably what lost him the game. It, it wouldn't have been an instant. It would have still been horrible if he hadn't moved him first, but he wouldn't, it wouldn't have been lost how it, how it was. Um... You know, so having said that, you know, it's harsh. I'm not criticising for that one mistake, but I think it was a mistake there. As it, as it turned out, obviously it looks like one. Um, six AV breaks to 18. So three times as many AV breaks from on on. However, those six AV breaks, five were Kaz, one of which was a kill. It is five total. You know, it was only five total. It wasn't five plus a kill. So he didn't make a, he didn't make a Kaz every time he broke, broke armour. But, you know, ultimately, although that's a high ratio... Ornan still made nine nine stuns as well, which does add up. Outblocked him. Um, on the dice rolls, we've got forty five percent dodges for Andre, sixty six percent GFI, seventy five percent boneheads. Pass through nine failed three. Pickups were fifty fifty when they were all three pluses. That's pretty horrible. Um, catches were thirty three. I think there might have been scatters there. Passes were none out of two, but that didn't matter because it was on the one turn and it didn't matter at all. Um, block dice 25, 31, 32. So, so above average block dice, absolutely. Uh, for Ornan, however, 28, 34, 47. So, pretty outrageous block dice. Outrageously good block dice for Ornan there. 
and uh, th two out of three pickups. 69% dodges, so good dodges. Six out of six GFIs, and 17 bonehead passes and two failures. So you've got to feel bad when the other guy activates his ogre 19 times and you activate yours 12 and yours boneheads more than he does. So, you know, I do think that... Um, I do think that uh, Ornan was luckier in every single respect. I mean, the the dice the dice log pretty much shows that he was luckier in every single respect. But you know, um, fair play to Andre for battling against it. You know, and and he got some good dice of his own with with all those cards. Certainly got him in with a chance. Uh, you know, and it's not. I'm not hating on Ornan. I'm not taking anything away from him. Um, you know, other people could have had those dice and certainly not won. So congrats to Ornan into the semi-finals. Um, and that's a guaranteed thousand dollars and uh, a bunch of stuff from Asus. So yeah, I think they, I think they both played very well overall. Overall, they both played well, and uh, yeah, both played well. Congrats to both. Well, commiserations to Andre. Congrats to Warnan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.